Hello. Part 3 of this special lecture presentation on the core competency assessments is intended to introduce you to a few concepts and ideas that are directly related to the second core competency that will be assessed on Unit Exam 2. That core competency is personal responsibility. It will also introduce you to the actual writing prompt that you will see on Unit Exam 2. Let's begin by discussing a few concepts that are relevant to this assessment. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What did Jefferson mean when he wrote these hallowed words in 1776? Clearly, Jefferson and the other American founders believe that all persons have a right by the laws of nature to not have their lives arbitrarily taken from them. Additionally, all persons have a right to exercise certain civil liberties rights and retain specific economic liberties as well. Additionally, Americans of this era believe that individuals have the right to be free from unreasonable interference with their enjoyment of basic personal freedoms particularly the interference that they believed was most likely to come from government. Let's take a moment to review how the concepts of personal freedoms, civil liberties, and economic liberties are generally understood in American society. Personal freedoms refer to the ability of an individual to make decisions affecting his or her life. As a society, we believe each person has the right to determine for himself or herself where he or she prefers to live, what he or she believes or does not believe, who he or she will marry or not marry, what work he or she will devote his or her life to, or whether he or she will procreate or not pre procreate, among many other basic personal considerations. This is what Jefferson means by the phrase, pursuit of happiness. Jefferson and the other American founders recognized that individuals derive happiness from per different pursuits. They believed that society and its authoritative institutions, government, should not dictate to individuals on matters of personal choice. Indeed, when individuals are permitted the personal freedom to determine for themselves the ends of their pursuits, they are most likely to achieve their personal happiness goals. Ultimately, when we as a society promote the ideal of personal freedom, we are saying that no one knows better than the individual what will make that individual happy. So long as his or her pursuit of happiness does not interfere with or impede other person's pursuits of happiness, he or she should be permitted the greatest freedom that is practically possible to pursue it. Civil liberties are the freedoms that are guaranteed to the individual by the Bill of Rights and the United States Constitution generally. Civil liberties take the form of negative constraints on the power of government. For example, the First Amendment freedoms, rights of free worship, free speech, free press, peaceably assemble, petition government for redress of grievances, the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, the Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable searches and seizures, the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, among others that are listed in the Bill of Rights, are all protected against the authority of government. In their classical liberal political perspective, the American founders perceived government as the principal threat to these civil liberties rights. This is why the Bill of Rights begins with the phrase, Congress shall make no law abridging the civil liberties rights listed in the Bill of Rights. Economic liberties include the right of individuals to obtain, control, use, and dispose of the property resources they own, the right to, free, the right to exercise freedom of choice in competitive markets, the right to enter into contracts and participate as either buyers or sellers in competitive markets, the right to engage in entrepreneurial enterprises if they so choose. Consumers can buy goods and services they choose for themselves. Workers can choose their own vocations. 
No one can dictate to another person how he or she will employ his or her labor. All economic actors are driven by rational self-interest and should be permitted the freedom to determine for themselves how they will attempt to maximize their economic objectives. Americans' acceptance of these basic principles, economic liberty and property rights, indicates that they are generally receptive to the fundamental tenets of capitalism. Just as the classical liberal political ideals of Jefferson and the other American founders suggest limitations on government's authority to restrict personal freedom and civil liberties rights, capitalism posits a fairly limited scope of government authority to interfere with the economic rights of individuals. Personal responsibility means that an individual acknowledges or recognizes the decisions he or she makes or actions or behaviors he or she undertakes lead to specific outcomes for his or her own life or the lives of others with whom he or she comes into direct contact. In its simplest conceptualization, personal responsibility means that the individual accepts credit for his or her successes and blame for his or her failures. Accepting personal responsibility means that an individual is willing to bear or endure or live with the consequences for his or her own life, life and the lives of dependent children, family, etc., resulting from his or her decisions and actions. An individual who accepts personal responsibility for his or her decisions and actions does not attempt to deflect or pass causation for the outcomes or the effects of the outcomes onto other individuals or institutions. I have uploaded a document entitled Core Competency 2 Instructions and Writing Prompt for Unit Exam 2 to the Blackboard Government Course website, which lists seven policy scenarios. You can find this instructions document by clicking on the link to Special Lecture Presentation, Core Competency 2, Personal Responsibility and Individual Liberty, in the navigation pane on the left side of the Blackboard screen. Examine the following list of policies. I provide the list here for easy reference. These policies may have actually been enacted in some jurisdiction or may have been proposed in some jurisdiction. For our purposes, assume that all are policies that are currently enacted in some governing jurisdiction, whether local, state, or national. While there is not a lot of information provided for any of the policies in the list, think about what might motivate a government to adopt and implement each of these policies. There really is no need to provide detailed information about any of the scenarios. This is not intended to be a research assignment. I do not expect you to go out and do research on any of these policy scenarios. Of course, you may investigate any or all of the scenarios if you wish to learn more. This is a thought exercise. Build some time into your preparation to simply think about these scenarios. Mandatory, mandatory health care insurance requires individuals to have health care insurance, limits on welfare benefits, limits the period of time recipients of public assistance can receive benefits to two years, crime victim restitution, requires persons convicted of committing personal or property crimes to pay restitution to the victims of their crimes, child support enforcement, empowers the state attorney general's office to locate absent parents, establish paternity, enforce child support orders, enforce medical support orders, and collect and distribute child support payments from parents who refuse to voluntarily comply with child support orders from a state court. Law punishing parents for their children's behaviors and actions. Imposes criminal penalties on parents or legal guardians who fail to provide adequate supervision for their minor children's behaviors and actions, permitting their children to a. commit acts of juvenile crime, b. bully other children, 
C, become truants, or D, achieve substandard academic progress. Sugar tax on junk food places an excise tax, a special sales tax, on non-essential food items in an effort to curb the obesity epidemic, particularly among children. Mandatory liability insurance on motor vehicles requires owners of motor vehicles, cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, to carry liability insurance sufficient to cover damages they might cause to other motorist vehicles or property. On Unit Exam 2, you will be asked to write an essay in which you address the following items in reference to one of the seven policy scenarios. Number one, what is the problem that the policy is intended to remedy? You should discuss the problem using the concepts and terminology introduced in our treatment of personal freedom, civil liberties, economic liberties, and personal responsibility. Two, identify two alternatives to the policy that might be feasible solutions to the problem. The policy scenario you are presented with on the exam and the two alternatives you come up with mean that there are three feasible policy alternatives that you will be discussing in your essay. The professor will give you one on the exam. You will identify two others that you believe might be feasible responses to the problem you identified in question number one. Number three, identify up to three arguments supporting each of the three alternatives. That is, identify, identify at least one argument, but no more than three arguments, supporting alternative one. At least one, but no more than three, supporting alternative two. And the same for alternative three. Arguments in favor of an alternative, pros, should indicate how the alternative induces persons targeted by the policy to recognize and accept personal responsibility for their actions or behaviors. Again, you should use the concepts and terminology introduced in our treatment of personal freedom, civil liberties, economic liberties, and personal responsibility. Number four, identify up to three arguments in opposition to each of the three alternatives. That is, identify at least one argument, but no more than three arguments, opposing alternative one, at least one, but no more than three, opposing alternative two, and the same for alternative three. Arguments in opposition to an alternative, cons, should indicate how the alternative fails to induce persons targeted by the policy to recognize and accept personable personal responsibility for their actions or behaviors. Again, you should use the concepts and terminology introduced in our treatment of personal freedom, civil liberties, economic liberties, and personal responsibility. Number five, indicate which of the three alternatives you would select if you had to decide which should become the adopted policy. Explain why you think your choice is the best. Of course, you should use the concepts and terminology introduced in our treatment of personal freedom, civil liberties, economic liberties, and personal responsibility. Okay, that does it for this part three of the special lecture presentation series. You can now begin your preparations for the essay portion of Unit Exam 2.